All right, guys, welcome, welcome back to day three of the Side Hustle Bootcamp. I am sharing my screen now so we can jump into the content for today. Really excited about today because today is when we talk about actually testing out our side hustle. What does this entail? What does this look like for you? Whether you are a product-based business, service-based business, podcaster, content-based business, um, these steps will be applicable to you and they are or what I have found have really helped me in whatever side hustle I was doing to start to get the ball rolling. So um, first and foremost, I want to just see a quick show of hands. You can, um, you know, give me the raise hand emoji if you did yesterday, the last two days of homeworks. <laughs> All right. I want to know, okay, I'm seeing some hands being raised, or, or you can just say yes in the chat too. Why don't we do it that way? It's a little bit easier, but um, you guys, it's really important to, you know, after you attend or watch the replay that you take the actions. And I've tried to make the actions as realistic as possible, meaning we're going to cover steps today that take more than one day and one night to actually do. So I'm cognizant of that. I'm not giving you anything that cannot be done in one night. So it's really important if you want to make the most of the boot camp to actually take those steps. So um, let me know if you've done the homework. Uh, Aaron said did Monday and jotted things down from yesterday. All right. Okay. How are you guys finding like taking these actions? How are you feeling about taking charge and really moving forward with your side hustle and not just keeping everything in your head, but taking, even if you have a side hustle and you've been challenged, um, how are you finding like how you're moving forward with the actions that you're learning in the bootcamp? Shalanda says, I'm feeling motivated. Lion Flood says, yes, homework done, feels good. No, it's progression. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so yeah, that's, that's what we want. Um, Brittany says, feeling confirmed. All right, awesome, good stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into today. So like I said, you guys all know, today we're talking about how to test out your side hustle idea. And so today we're really going to be getting into how to actually start testing out your idea, like how to actually start to implement this idea and then which steps are important and which steps are just stall tactics. A lot of times we do get caught up in these stall tactics and then we get stuck in this space and we tell ourselves that we are researching, that we're preparing, that we're doing all these things. And what a lot of that is, is the pre-work, like I like to call it. So, you know, let's say you're going to the gym and you get stuck in, you know, finding the right workout clothes, do, taking your pre-workout and all these other steps. And that's great, but you're not actually working out, <laughs> okay? When you get to the gym, if you stop to talk to the front desk person and hang out with your friends, you start walking on the treadmill, oh, I got to find the perfect podcast to listen to. Again, you still, still don't get any credit for that, right? You have to actually start working out. So a lot of us with our side hustle, do the same thing. And we are in that pre-workout phase, but we really actually need to take important steps. So how many of you have started testing out your side hustle since the boot camp began? Um, Jasmine says, I'm working on my self-motivation and time management. We're going to get into time management on Friday. Um, Shalanda says, I feel accountable to everyone on the call. So it's making me take action. Good, good. And we'll do some more accountability check-ins inside of the Facebook group after this too. All right. So Yes, to have started your testing out your side hustle. Okay, good, good. Um, and if you haven't started testing out your side hustle, what's been preventing you? Again, let's go back to that because I want to continue to have my pulse on what is preventing you guys from taking action if you haven't already. So do let me know. Um, Jasmine says no, but you're feeling you're working on your self motivation and time management. I did hear you say that. I did see you say that. Okay. Um, so yeah, any, every, everyone else, let me know if you haven't, why not? All right, so now let's get into, um, let's get right into the steps. So we're going to go, you know, bang, bang, bang into the one or the other, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about each. So with moving forward and testing out your side hustle, the very first basic step is going to be deciding on a name. And this is not a step that I want you to get stuck in. So this first step is one again, that people get stuck in like, oh, you think the name is so, so important. And oh my God, I can't put this out if I don't have the right name, right? No, don't spend too much time on this. 
That is a stall tactic. The name and the logo are the biggest stall tactics in the history of humanity for not starting your side hustle. Because guess what? It can change. The only thing you need at this point is to make sure people know what you do and what you offer. That's it. Okay, because that allows you to go to market. So case in point, um, my website designer, she she always reminds me that listening to the Side Hustle Pro podcast is how she she got up the nerve to finally start doing web design as a side hustle. And she ultimately left her job and now does that full time, you know, went from side hustler to entrepreneurship because of listening to the Side Hustle Pro podcast. And guess what the name of her business is? Shirley T Designs. That's it. Okay, it's not no fancy, you know, life transformational kind of name, but it tells you what she does. It tells you her name, which is a plus, right? Tells you her name and what she does. And if you're looking for a designer, hey, I'm Googling designers. Um, After a while, her, her website might come up. And even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because if we're looking for a website designer, you're more concerned with the product, with the service that this person offers. I don't care where her name is. I wanna see the portfolio. I wanna see what sites that she's done. And that's it. And the fact that she has a place holder on the internet that says, you know, here, here's my site. Here's where you can find examples of my work. That is all that matters. So if any of you have been stuck on a name, let me know because it is really, really important to not let that get you stuck. I always like to remind people also, some of you may have heard this story, but you guys know that I had to do a rebrand earlier in my journey. So when I started my podcast, it was originally a blog and it was called Kayla K Speaks. Um, it was a play on my name, which a lot of people like to do. Sometimes the name thing doesn't work out, okay? Um, no one could pronounce it. They couldn't read it. It would They would say Kayla Speaks, uh, Kalia, that AI combo gets people every time. And ultimately it just didn't tell them what my content was about. What did, you know, people thought I, it was like a website for my speaking portfolio. It was not clear enough. But once I started to blog about side hustlers, I realized that I was really interested in the stories of side hustle pros and I wanted to shift to only talk about that. And so that is how I was able to rebrand. It did not cost me an arm and a leg, you know, I didn't have to do this huge, expensive um, thing to change my name. So if you start out with one thing and you eventually have to rebrand, it's going to be okay. It's better that you get out there and start making money or start making an impact, start getting viewers, start getting people interested in what you have to offer. And later on, you can just say, hey, guys, my new name is this. The end. (laughs) All right. Um, Jackie says, oh, no, Destiny, you said you've rebranded yourself multiple times as you needed to. Okay. And Jackie, you're thinking about a name, rename, rebrand. All right, let's do it. So all of that is fine. So when you decide on a name, the next step is to get a domain name. So, you know, domain name is your website address. And in order to do that, you can go to um, websites like GoDaddy.com. You can go to Google even to get domain names. You just park that name by paying anywhere from, depending on you know what other upgrades you select, anywhere from $9.99 or $5.99 all the way up to you know $19.99, $29.99 for your domain name. And with that domain name, this is what's going to inform things like your social media handles. So your social media pages, the names of those pages um, are sometimes referred to as handles. And you're also going to set up your email address. So one thing that you do want to do before you decide on a name, and usually when you go to purchase a name, like if it's a really popular name, the domain probably won't even be available. So that's one of the first inklings that someone else is using this if you haven't done your due diligence and checked before. But if you really love a name and it sounds like something that, hey, someone else might have used before, then head over to the US um, trademark database, uh, USTPO.gov. I think that's the correct address. I, I put that in very quickly, but um, US Trademark and Patent Office website and then you can do what's called a search for the a word search to see if anyone is using that because no you don't need to trademark anything at this point however why start your business with a name that's trademarked and in use that means you'll definitely have to change it so don't get um you know 
don't fall in love with a name that's definitely taken. So that's one thing that you do want to do. But if it's not taken, then go ahead and get that domain name. Um, Destiny says Shopify is a good one to use to generate names as well. Thank you. That's a cool, that's a good resource to you guys to know as well, especially if you'll be using Shopify. So to recap, first two steps so far, decide on a name. All right. Don't spend too long on this. Don't trip. Don't, don't make it more huge than it has to be. And then two, then go and purchase a domain name. So now we're getting the ball rolling. All right. We've decided, look, this is my side hustle. It's going to be called this. I got the domain names. And once I got the domain names, I went ahead and parked a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a Twitter page. Okay. And even a TikTok page these days, right? You want to be on the major social media platforms. You don't have to create a bunch of content right now. Just park it, you know, make sure that you have the name and, um, you know, maybe put up a profile photo or something, but just get the names. So again, if this is something where you're finding that it's taken all across social media, this might be something, not even might be, but before you actually buy the domain name, you might want to do a search on these platforms just to see how in use it is, because that's going to impact your brand if you have to tell people a whole bunch of different names to find you. All right. Are you following me? So it's Side Hustle Pro. Um, I was fortunate enough when I uh, got the name, I was really surprised. I was like, wow, no one's using this yet. But I did my search on USPTO. Thank you, Keshna, the uh, US Patent and Trademark Office. Um, I did my search and no one was using it. I, I did social media searches. No one was using it. I said, all right, this is going to be my name. And I quickly grabbed it up everywhere. So later on, when you do, if you do decide this is the name I want to stick with, and I want to go ahead and file a trademark and all of this, um, you know, you will be able to, even if someone comes along after you, you do have a first mover advantage once your business is in use and you can show first use. Okay. So go ahead and actually do this and then don't just leave it there, but actually start to do the next steps to start testing out your side hustle and putting it in use. So the next thing you're going to do is set up a quick website. And again, you guys, this is not homework for, for one night, right? This is not something I'm expecting you all to do tonight, but I want you to know what the testing out portion of side hustling entails. So you do have to set up a quick website you'll need a website builder and a content management system. So that's one in the same. You can use something like WordPress or Squarespace for that. And then you're going to need a host. So a host is what, you know, makes sure that your site doesn't crash. So it, it um, provides the backing uh, storage capability for the site. So something like a flywheel or bluehost.com provides the hosting and they allow you through the walkthroughs on their sites um, to connect the two. Now, I'm not going to get too technical here because I'm not a technical girl, all right? I am a creative, I'm a content creator, um, I'm a marketer, and I was able to do this. So that just goes to show that if you just follow the tutorials, you will be able to do this. What I would, did when I was setting up my website, again, KaylaKSpeaks.com is still live. If you want to see the basic website that I had up, um, I went to a website. I was browsing other podcast websites and other blogs. And when I found, would find ones that I liked, I would plug in the URL to this uh, site called WordPress Theme Detector. So it's WPThemeDetector.com. I believe it's WP Theme. I'm typing this in. And, you know, if it's not on WordPress, then it won't come up, obviously. But it, it can still tell you, oh, no, this is a Squarespace site or this site is built on that. And so it allowed me to see, OK, what are people building their sites on? And when I saw a lot of WordPress, I was like, I'm going to try out WordPress. And then it tells you the actual theme that they're using. So with WordPress, you can pay to um, have a theme, which is basically the layout apply to your website. So I found a site I like, I like their layout, I plugged it into WordPress theme detector, and then I purchased the same theme and added it to my site. So if you like a magazine style, if you like a, a style with a lot of white space, there are a lot of great templates out there these days so that you can look like you have a really professionally built website that looks like a, you know, a, a website on, on a blog that you might read. And you, all you did was just buy the theme and have it applied to your site. 
So I hope you guys are following there, but um, this is something that can be very, very straightforward. This is not the time to hire a website designer. If you are starting out your, your side hustle, you do not need a website designer. All right, this might be a controversial stance, but it's one I stick behind. You do not need a website designer before you've launched your side hustle. And here's why. Most of the times, things are going to change about your business. And so the user interface that you create is going to have to change. And so you don't want to create a website, spend thousands of dollars on a website designer, and then find out, you know what? When people enter my site, it doesn't make sense for them to see this first instead of this. You know, I need to change this whole thing. And it's not an easy change because I'm actually changing around the entire background and how the, the site functions. So any website designer worth their salt will also emphasize that they don't want to work with people for a major design unless they've been in business and they can say, here's what I need from a website. I need my customers to do this. I need my customers to see this. I need to remind them this on this page before they leave. So just create a basic home on the internet for your side hustle at this phase in the game. Y'all got me? You're fine along? <laughs> um, Again, add, add, go ahead and comment in the chat if you have any questions here. So again, first few steps, deciding on a name, grabbing that domain name and your social pages, and then three, setting up a quick website. So some of you are already at this phase. So now let's talk about the email marketing. So there is no side hustle without communicating with your audience. And we talked about on the audience yesterday, we talked about how we find that audience, how we narrow them down, what we're going to have to do to get really, really focused and specific on who we're talking to. But the more we learn about who that person is, then the more we're able to find them. And social media is a tool to find them, no matter what platform you use. It's a tool to offer them something so that they'll sign up for your email list and then through this email list, you'll be able to manage your communications with them. So you guys receive reminders every day from me for the bootcamp via ConvertKit. That's what I currently used. When I was starting out, I used MailChimp. Um, AWeber is another um, example of an email marketing platform. So uh, this is often referred to as email service provider as well. Whichever you want to call it, the goal here is to find a platform that works for you, works for your business budget, and is, is a platform that makes you feel like you know what's going on. So some platforms might make you feel more intimidated and you're like, you know what, this is too techy for me, then get more basic. So you can sign up for a free trial with all of them and then see which ones you really like. And the great thing about something like ConvertKit, for example, is if you later on down the line say, hey, you know what, I need a more robust platform. Um, I need something that has XYZ. I've heard they have it. They make it really easy to switch from one to the other. So I started out with MailChimp because it was free for, for like up to a certain number of subscribers. So when you're starting at zero, not having to pay a monthly uh, bill to your email service provider is very, very, is, is definitely great. So um, start with one and go from there. You're able to send newsletters. You're able to send sales notifications. Um, Black Friday is coming up. You, you know, start thinking about, does it, that apply to your audience and how are you going to message them? So make sure you sign up for that email service provider. All right. Cool beans. So now once you've done all that, that, that was like the base foundation layer, all right? Deciding on a name, getting the domain name and social pages, you know, getting up a quick website and then um, getting an email service provider. You want to start to set up your startup elements. And I can't emphasize this enough, you guys. This is not something that is going to take one night. I don't expect it. To, this is not going to be in your homework all for tonight. However, um, you are going to have to map out and give yourself real deadlines, not fake deadlines, real deadlines about when you're going to do this so that it actually happens. Don't just think about it and say, oh, I need to do that. Oh, eventually I need to do that. No, we are doing this. We're doing this in this last quarter of the year and getting it together. So setting up your startup elements looks like different things depending on what kind of business you have. So I just gave you some examples here. Um, if you have a physical business, it will look like 
deciding, am I going to drop ship or am I going to keep inventory? If I'm doing drop shipping, let me set up that drop shipping. If I'm doing inventory, let me still find that inventory partner, that manufacturing partner and decide where I'm going to house inventory. Okay. Let me set up my Shopify. Let me get the designs done. And, you know, Fiverr is a, a starting point for things like designs. You can also look into 99 designs. They have designers on site that you can research, look through and then work with and partner to develop things like merch or anything that you're designing. Um, if you have a service coaching business, this is the time as you're setting up your startup elements, you have to decide, understand what you offer. Again, the target audience piece comes in really, really important, okay? You cannot do this step without understanding who you're talking to and then outlining your packages, understanding what is going to be your delivery sequence and frequency? What does your audience need? What will the schedule be? And then what is your value proposition? And how do you communicate that? How do you communicate, hey, I can help you with this if you come to me and here's why it's worth your while. You're not going to write that out on the website like that or in the email like that, but that's what you have to be thinking about when you have a service coaching business. And then for my podcasters, you know, in the building, now is the time to think about how are you going to invest in yourself? So I do have my podcast moguls training program for those who want to take their podcast seriously and go to that next level. Um, by the way, that program is going to be increasing. The price of that is going to be increasing after Black Friday. So if you want to join now, that $9.97 price is the, the, um, the lowest it's going to be. It's actually going to be... Um, yeah, going quite up because we're going into Podcast Moguls 2.0 and I'm in the process of revamping it. So for podcasting, like now is the time to invest in training, invest in equipment, microphone, laptop, start to outline your episode, set up hosting, all of that, which by the way, I walk you through inside of Podcast Moguls. So we will have a breakout session and I think that's going to be Friday. Um, that's the, the final decision that I've come to. So we will have a breakout session to talk more about that. But do know that there will be startup elements that you have to um, do to get there. Thank you so much, Jackie. Yes, Jackie was a part of Podcast Moguls. So I'll just share the link to join if anyone is um, wanting to start right with that. All right. So now let's, does anyone have any questions on the startup elements? Let me know if you have any questions in the chat on that. Um, what kind of business do you have? What kind of uh, startup elements will apply to you? I swear sometimes this chat just disappears from my life. I'm like, come back chat. <laughs> come back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> can you do can you do business as, oh wait, Jackie, um, there's a typo here. I'm, I'm a little confused. Oh, can you be doing business as you change your name or as if you've changed your name? Let me know what you're asking. Okay. And then Shalanda says, sorry. Okay. You have to log off. That's okay. Um, Jackie, doing business as name. So you're doing business as you can have many doing business as name. Um, I'm not an attorney, so, you know, I'm not going to give out legal advice, but I'm talking about your name in this regard. I'm talking about the name that you are showing the world, marketing the world and having across your platforms. If I'm Side Hustle Pro, um, but I'm doing business as podcast moguls, you know, that that, you know, is not what I'm talking about, like the actual uh, legal doing business as. Is that what you're asking? Um, OK, Jasmine says funding for it all is a big concern. I'm often looking for resources and how to ask for more support. So as far as funding goes, I really recommend starting as basic as possible and upgrading when you are able to. So the goal is to get out there and put yourself out there so that you can start building your reputation and so you can start getting customers. Uh, they can't pay you unless they see you, right? So we can't um, not do it and then hope to get funding. Sometimes we have to be our own funders, which is why we side hustle, right? We, we make sure the main job is good. We make that main job our investor. We set aside a bit of that income and we invest that into our side hustle slowly at a level that makes sense for us. That's why for things like your email service provider, start with the free trials, start with the free ones that are free up to you know 5,000 subscribers or however much the free trials are. Start low 
and then aim to sell, develop your offering. What are you offering, whether it's physical or service? Aim to start getting those first customers, those first clients, and then invest back into your business from there. Um, you said you're considering offering it for free to start. So um, remind me again what you're offering, Jasmine, and let's go from there. Um, Brittany says, I need to purchase supplies to make my products. Yes. So the purchasing of supplies, again, this is when we have to be our own investor. So that's the phase where you, you do have to set aside a bit. What can you cut out of your current budget and use to invest in supplies for next month? And then, you know, how can we be strategic with the supplies so that we stretch it as far as possible so we won't need to re-up for a while so we can make the products, um, promote the products, get those first customers, and then reinvest in the business. Um, Destiny says TikTok is huge for me. That is wonderful. TikTok is a really, really great platform um, if you can make it work for you. And if your audience is there, remember guys that you, you do have to determine where your audience is. Some of your audiences, depending on what you're offering, they may be on LinkedIn, okay? They may still be on Facebook. Um, so their age and their habits are very important to know. So make sure you understand that some platforms will just be for you a, a great place to have real estate to make sure you're represented, but your core audience may not be there every single day. Um, Jackie says you, you will consult, are there resources for developing a course? Uh, so yeah, there are resources for developing a course. I do have an episode um, way back in the day that I'll share with you guys about how I went about creating my course. And of course, I know some of you have probably heard of Danielle Leslie, who I um, consulted and worked with for developing my first program. So there are some great resources out there for packaging your knowledge into a course. Uh, so I think you're trying to say that you're you're going to do legal consulting or or oh you will consult legal sorry <laughs> cuz I'm like I know you're a doctor. <laughs> okay. Um I, Jasmine I thought that was you. I want to make sure I didn't misspeak. Okay. So with the professional development course for at risk youth, um you will have to do it for free for a little bit. Um if you go all the way back, search for my first episode with the budget nista it was episode 10 or 11 probably 11 9 10 or 11 and um if i remember i will send that link in 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 today's email okay so she talked about this strategy that she did so she had a background in teaching and she created curriculums with her financial education she would offer it for free um the feedback from the recipients were so great that you know, her name started to be in rooms that she wasn't even in. And then people started asking her, well, how much do you charge for this? And so then with the next um, businesses, she started to offer packages and she started to, you know, come on as a consultant for a fee. So you will have to do it for free at first. But if you're able to think through, okay, I will do a two week or a three week, but by December, I want to do my very first paid and I will leverage, hey, you know, as I go to pitch um, my first paid thing, I'll say I'm doing, I'm currently working with XYZ and XYZ. They don't need to know that you're working with them for free. Okay. So this is how you have to start thinking. Like you can be pitching yourself for someone else while you're working for free. Um, Brittany says, when do you recommend spending the time to create a course in the midst of running your business when the course is not your main product? If the course is not your main product, I would recommend tabling that and doing your main business. And, and when you say running your business, I'm assuming you're not, you're still talking about a side hustle, right? Running your business and making sure your business is good is going to come before creating a course um, because you don't want the course to be at the expense of your business. All right. So that, that, that's the setup elements um, part, you guys. This is going to take the most time and it, it's going to take the most time because it's important. So thinking through these things is important and then also scheduling them out on your calendar. Like, okay, I'm going to invest in this program and I'm going to, from Monday through Friday for the next two weeks, let's say it's eight modules, um, I'm going to Monday through Thursday, spend an hour on each module and then start to implement. So if I do that for two weeks, then you know that's gonna take me um, until XYZ date. 
And that's when I aim to be done with the program. And after I'm done with the program, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. So you, you have to physically map it out on your calendar. That's how I was able to move forward. I'm very big on just-in-time learning. So all of you guys who are in the boot camp now, I think you probably have a similar mindset where before I was getting ready to launch, um, anything, I would take a program in it. So before I started pitching sponsors, I took a, uh, I went to a sponsorship intensive that was, what was that at the time? $14.97, right? And that was the biggest investment that I, no, $11.97, excuse me. That was the biggest investment that I'd ever uh, invested into my side hustle at the time. And again, this was from, um, actually, this was after, was this after I had tested out a few other revenue streams. So I had a little money from my side hustle to invest back into myself. So I, I tested out t-shirts and I did, again, was working my full-time job and, and you know setting aside a little bit of that. So invested in that right when I was getting ready to pitch. If, I, if you invest in something before you're mentally prepared and ready to do it, that's when you're less likely to do it. So invest in a podcasting course before you, you're, you're sure I'm focusing on podcasting in this season in my life. Invest in, for me, um, there's a fa- you know Facebook ads course that I want to take. And I know that in October, I'm doing X, I'm focusing on a certain lane, but in November, that's when I'm ready to take that on. So I'm going to purchase that course in November. So that's how my brain works, right when I'm ready to do the thing. Um, <laughs> there are folks who can create the course for you also. <laughs> All right. Look into that. You guys, I don't know who those, those folks are. Jasmine, are you saying you're, you're those folks, <laughs> um, zoom user, what was the sponsorship intensive that you participated in? It no longer exists. It was a, um, sponsorship intensive in DC. Um, yeah, that person doesn't even do that anymore. So, I, I can't even recommend that one, but w- inside of podcast moguls, um, so what, I had to do because that was about event sponsorships. And so it wasn't even podcasting specific. So what I I really took away from that is that I could do send cold pitches and I just had to make sure that, you know, I was really speaking to the value of my podcast, the audience and all that good stuff. So I've since adapted it in terms of Um, I had to learn about the podcasting space. So inside of Podcast Moguls, you will learn how to pitch what works inside of podcasting. Because you know, you might not know, but podcasting is a CPM, you know, uh, cost per impression dominant business. And you need to be able to speak to that. There's actually a whole calculation I had to learn outside of that. And so I teach that. So if you are are interested and want to know more about podcast sponsorship, and how to go down that route. I teach that inside of Podcast Moguls. Um, Jasmine says, yep, I love the art of education. Building learning tools that engage the learner is a big factor for me. So so that's another side hustle, right? Like as you are going back and forth, um, start, start to think about, like we talked about in lesson one, choosing the right side hustle for you. Uh, so you express some reservations. I know it's probably it's like probably has more of a personal passion, mission driven element for you. But then sometimes not everything needs to be our side hustle that we monetize. So that's some food for thought as well. All right. Because we all are multi-passionate. We all have different skills. We could literally monetize anything that we do well, but it's about which one's going to be the right one long term. And if something is going to trigger you long term, even though it can make you money, it's something to really reflect on. All right. So (laughs) Candy says, I would love that building knowledge to be successful. All right. Cool beans. So setting up startup elements to return to our steps. Let's go through them one more time and then get into the next ones. So one, decide on a name, get a domain name, set up your social pages and all that. Set up a quick website, sign up for an email marketing platform, set up your startup elements. And I've left this slide up enough that I know you guys, you know, you get it. What physically, if you're doing a physical business, what you need to do, if you're doing a coaching business, what you need to do, podcast, what you need to do. Um, uh, I would classify course under coaching business as well, because you need to be able to sit down and outline, what am I going to offer? How do I want to break this down? What modules um, will this entail? And then who needs this and how do I need, how do I let them know that my course is what they need? So then 
after you have all that, it's time to start offering your product, your service, or your content. And that means it's time to announce on all your social pages and your website, you know, so you can get your first clients or users or listeners. So a lot of, a lot of us are hiding our gifts. A lot of us are thinking that no one needs to know yet because I'm still working on it. I don't care if you haven't developed the full program yet. I don't care if you're going to be revamping the program. I don't care if you feel like it's outdated and you need to upgrade it. People need to know that you can teach this thing. People need to know that you can make this thing. I don't care if it's currently in your kitchen that you're making your shea butter. I don't care if, you know, your podcast is recording out of your living room. I really don't care about any of those things. Um, People need to know that you're doing it. And so there's so many times when you guys reach out to me and you say, hey, I'm doing this or I want to do this. And my question to you is, have you told anyone that you want to do that? Have you told anyone that you can do that? Have you said, hey, um, here's a course that I just designed for this person. If if you want to package your knowledge into a, a course, feel free to reach out to me or here's where you can reach out to me to learn more about this service that I offer. Um, Host a webinar. There was one time when a girl I know, you know, posted on LinkedIn that uh, she shared her backstory. I've had so much success um, interviewing for major roles at, at Fortune 500 companies. I almost always get the job that I want and I've been able to do this and this and that and just share this impressive resume. And then shared, you know, I realized that not everyone has this experience. So I've decided to host this class about it, you know? And of course, it's like no one knew she was doing that. So you tell people what you're doing. You tell people your your receipts. And then you you set up a, a class. And then you can start to learn more about what people need so you can adjust and fine tune your offer. But this is what I mean by starting to offer your product. You have to start to offer your product, service, or content while you're still figuring it out because you'll always be figuring it out you will always be figuring it out um i am in my i'm going into my fifth year of, i'm in my fifth year of business because i left my job in december 2017 so i'll have my anniversary for that in december and um of course five years in i'm still figuring things out and i'm still refining things um so you have to put it out there. You have to start offering what you do and what your content is going to be about as you figure it out. (laughs) Jackie says, what you're saying is giving me hope. Good. Um, uh, Alexa says, very true. Just post the content. Yes, 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 yes. So I think that in this world of uh, algorithms, it can be very discouraging. Um, And, you know, I saw someone say the other day, and I think this is so true, that when we see something like five likes or 10 likes or 15 likes, sometimes we get discouraged because we wanted 100 or 1,000, when in reality, if five people came up to you and said, you know, this really touched me, this made an impact on me, I'm going to do X, you would be like, wow, if you were walking down the street and five people came up to you and liked what you had to say or liked what you um, were, were holding in your hand and said, I want to buy one, you know, like you, you wouldn't feel the same way. So you just have to really shift your perspective when it comes to these um, things like social platforms, because you cannot control the algorithm. All you can do is keep on connecting with who needs to hear your message message so that they will become a customer and become a client and keep going from there and keep improving from there. Speaking of improving, um, a big part of the growth process is the analysis. You can't skip that part. So what I mean is you, you have to look at all the data that's at your disposal. So if you have a Shopify shop, you need to look at what people are doing when they get to that shop, where are they bouncing? Um, if people are going all the way to the checkout page and when they get to putting in their credit card, they're leaving their cart. Okay, there's something to be assessed there. Is it the, the shipping rates? Is it the options that you have? Is it something you have on your page about when this will be fulfilled? You know, I went to a page the other day and um, I got all the way to the checkout cart and I knew that this was going to be a pre-order. So I knew that it would take a while. I didn't know how long it would take, but when I saw the length of time that it would take to actually get the product, I didn't end up checking out because I had the product in mind for a certain event. And that event was before the fulfillment date. So 
if that person sees that, they know that there's something on this page that, that stopped me from completing the purchase. And you might not know exactly what it is, but you know which page you need to study and test and, and, and analyze. You can do an A-B test and see which one is working better. Same thing with your podcast. You can analyze which episodes have done better and you can look at things like the, the guest or the topic the, head, the, the, the title of the episode, um, how you did your show notes, how you did promo that week. I know for sure there are weeks when I fall off and I don't post about it on social. That episode is not going to get as many downloads as an episode where I you know posted a snippet from the episode and I shared it across all of my Facebook platform, excuse me, all of my social media platforms. And I did all of the work that I'm supposed to do that episode is going to outperform an episode where I get lazy or I let life have its way and I get busy and I don't do that. Um, similarly, with your coaching business, looking at the outcomes, you know, how are people doing? How are they progressing after they've had your service? What are the testimonials saying? Sometimes you might offer something and you might think, oh, I'm really good at this, right? The, the gift that I have is helping people to get X result. And then as you get back testimonials, people are saying something completely different. You're like, oh, I didn't even realize that this is, this is the big thing that people take away from this program. So I need to play that up more in marketing. So that is the benefit of analysis. And you have to be doing this on a weekly basis, if not daily. Um, Brittany, okay. I'm jumping into the comments for a little bit. Um, Brittany says, when did you begin email marketing and putting yourself out there more before or after you left my job? Before I left my job. So as a side hustler, uh, my assumption for you as a side hustler is that you are going to be building this out while you're working full time. I do not recommend quitting your job while you're still building out a business because it's not making you money yet, right? So that stress will force you to make if, if you're not making money from a job while you're building out a hustle, um, you, you will be tempted to make really bad decisions to get money quicker. And I don't want that for you. I want you to put, I want you to approach this business with integrity, passion, and quality. Okay. That doesn't mean slow. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't mean I want you to go slow, but I want you to not approach it from a pressured state and make rash decisions. All right. So that's out the way. So you say, as a wife with three young children and the breadwinner of my family, I'm afraid I won't be able to fulfill orders to meet the demand if I put myself out there more. So that is one of those things where we, um, we invent a worst case scenario before it's happened. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to put yourself out there more. And if that worst case scenario happens, which I don't think it will, if that worst case scenario happens, then pause for a second. Say, put up that notification that say, hey guys, um, I'm a team of one. I'm a mommy of three and a team of one. So your orders, there is a XYZ fulfillment time for orders as these are hand packed, handmade and hand packed with love. So you're gonna give people their heads up, right? And then you're gonna continue to collect money and that money will allow you to build out your team. So maybe you can hire a volunteer once a week to help you pack orders. It doesn't have to be a full-time staff member. This is literally someone you can find on um, something like, uh, what you call it, TaskRabbit, um, Upwork, any local um, you know, hiring tool that you have in your, your area. So do that first. And I guarantee you that will, that will help you more than worrying about it and then not taking action. Put yourself out there. Let people know what you have. All right. Um, Jasmine says, Brittany, I think Jasmine, you're about to say the similar thing that I, I uh, said, you said deeply, I believe that as the wife, mom of three and breadwinner, you can totally meet the man and then some don't let the fear take the shine. Exactly. That's what, that's what that is. That's fear. That's fear talking us out of it. Like, oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Um, so we're, we're all rooting for you and we can't wait. Tell, by the way, do you have a website yet? Yeah, drop the link. Let us know. What are you selling? What's going on? <laughs> all right. So Nix, you want to know what about Shopify? Is it worth it or better off to do it on our own? Are you saying to put it on your own website? I, I absolutely recommend Shopify because they, they're just, they're pros at this for what most of us need at the level of side hustling. A lot of your favorite websites and e-commerce sites are actually powered by Shopify. And they can also 
um, manage demand and check out way better. So a lot of people used to use WooCommerce, I believe is the plugin with WordPress. And that would crash, that sometimes crashes and it can be really problematic to try to be handling all of that backend on your own. So if you are a creator, by trade and you don't want to spend all your time managing backend issues, use a, uh, use a service that's going to help you. So uh, similarly with my podcast, I host my podcast on Libsyn. I really like their customer service. So I know that if I have an issue, I'm going to hit up Libsyn. I'm not trying to host this on my own website. And then I need to keep upgrading, upgrading data because websites aren't meant to host podcasts, right? So that I know I'm, I'm going to save myself from that issue by going with a, a software that is built for this, a company that's built for this. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad it was affirming, Brittany. Um, and can you get your children involved? That's true. I didn't even think about that. How old are the kids? Can they do some packing? <laughs> and then uh, let's talk about this refining as you go piece. So we really are only going to get better once you have a starting point. You don't even have anything to compare yourself to until you start. Before you start, all you're doing is comparing yourself to other people. And mind you, these people are 10, five years ahead of you. And so that is not the accurate comparison point at all. That's not apples for apples at all. You need to be comparing yourself to yourself. So in year two of podcasting, I could say, hey, I used to get X amount of downloads per per show and now I'm at this many downloads. I used to have this many followers, now I'm at this many followers. I used to have this many people on the email list, now I have this many people. I used to make zero dollars, now I make this many dollars. So you have to grow and be your own comparison point. Um, in addition, as you grow, give yourself permission to get better and give yourself grace for what you didn't know when you started. Things will change. Like I said, names will change sometimes. Logos will change. Um, I, I still shop from uh, Carol's Daughter when it was a Staples label on top of a plastic tub being mailed out to me in my dorm room, okay? Because I knew the contents worked really well. And at that time, I didn't see any other products for Black women hair care, natural hair. So your right customer, when you know who it is and you go out and you target them, they will shop from you. They will listen to you. They will consume your content or your services, no matter what shape or form your content is in. Um, we talked a little bit about course creation. When I was looking for course creation and I was interested in investing in someone who I felt did it really well, I did not care what her website looked like. I didn't care what her slides looked like inside of the program because the content I knew was helpful. Like as soon as I started consuming that, I was like, yes, yes, this this is what I'm going to do. This is great. All of that, right? So you think about yourself and think about how many people you shop from, listen to, admire and respect who do not have it all together. I guarantee you, it's, it's probably a lot of them. You don't, you probably don't even like people who look like they have it all together because you think they're being fake, right? You think they're hiding something. And that's the beauty of authenticity. That's the beauty of being imperfect. People actually trust you more <laughs> than when you look all glossy and perfect and like you got everything all together. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, Keshna says, I'm a creator and I'm trying to decide if an Etsy store is better to start with than my own website. Any thoughts? I think that eventually you will move off Etsy. So I would look into your own site with back by Shopify. Shopify allows you to make sites too. And then you can map it to a domain. So if you want to start there, go ahead and start there. Um, but Etsy, I know from a lot of creators that that can be very problematic. Um, so I don't know. You know what? What I'm going to say to you, is number one, look into both, look into both, see what would help you to get started quicker and go with the route that will help you to get started. Because if you're going to get overwhelmed by tech or intimidation, then you're going to stay stuck longer. And I don't want you to be stuck. <laughs> Brittany says, my children are three and five-year-old twins. <laughs> the five-year-olds could get to work. The five-year-olds could, could at least put some paper in the boxes. <laughs> Oh, but I get what you mean. And yes, authenticity, you guys, just being yourself. And I, I come to you and I speak to you from, you know, these, these, 
things that I'm saying to you, I have to speak it to myself often as a reminder. So I know, I know what you might be going through. I know what you might be seeing. And that's why we have to take breaks from social media because it's not the real world and it's lying to us and it's making us feel a certain way. When you start to find yourself feeling a certain way, like really tap in and remind yourself what's real here. This, this is not real. This is not, no one lives their life like this. And why am I allowing a platform with a really skewed, uh, we know it's skewed. We know that these platforms are really just created to keep people on the platform. So it's not about, it's not about mental health optimization and you know, use the platforms, don't let them use you. Use the platforms to get the information you need and then sign off and get down to business so that you can make money and that you can, you know, build your legacy, provide for your kids, provide for your family and do the things to invest in yourself the way you want to invest in yourself. That's all these platforms exist for. So don't get lost in the sauce, please. Alrighty. So now we have five minutes left. So I'm going to do, I really enjoyed like yesterday. Oh, let me share the homework with you. And then we'll do a quick, like one minute um, bonus. Like someone gets to ask a question as if it's VIP. All right. Hold on one second. So the, the key thing I want you guys to remember is that testing out your side hustle is the only way. It's the only way to move forward now. Um, it's the only way to determine how to improve. Um, you cannot test your side hustle and be hiding though. So you have to put yourself out there. You have to let yourself, let people know, hey, I do this thing. I sell this thing. I offer this program. And then the next time someone is in a space where they could use your service or they could recommend your service, you will come to mind. So you never know when someone is gonna ask someone else a question. The other day, someone, um, one of my old bosses actually reached out to me and wanted to know um, if I knew a great career coach for someone at like the C-suite executive level. And at that time, I actually drew a blank. I don't know why, but I just finished interviewing for the second time. I don't know why I drew a blank. I just finished interviewing someone who is an amazing career coach and who started a whole firm for coaching people in the C-suite. And now I'm going to tap back in and say, hey, you should look into this person. But I wouldn't be able to recommend someone if she wasn't putting herself out there and letting people know, hey, I do this. I have these skills. I help people in this way. So make sure that you're testing and you're moving forward from now on. So day three homework, you guys, I want you to take the following actions today. This is really, really simple, okay? This is not that whole list. That whole list will come in time. But what you're gonna do today is you're going to decide on a name. Don't overthink it. You're gonna pick a name. That's it, you're gonna pick a name. And you're going to then get a domain name. Again, go to something like GoDaddy or Google to get the domain name. And then you're going to get the social media pages as well. So the only reason that would take you um, more time is if you, you know, you want to search and make sure it's not taken on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and it's not taken in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office database. So you can do a quick searches there, but then sign on a name, get the domain name, and please don't try to do this thing where you're like, oh, I'm going to just tweak it this way on that platform and tweak it this way on that platform. I'll let you have an underscore and that's it. Don't, don't, don't be doing all these funky remixes across platforms, okay? Step two, sign up for an email marketing platform. So like I said, I started with MailChimp. If you want to do that, I think they um, may have one of the best uh, pricing per subscriber ratio when you're starting out. Very user-friendly. You can also look into ConvertKit, which I use now, um, because eventually you will probably want to scale up to something else. So you might just want to go straight into ConvertKit. They also have a free level, I believe. Um, and then step three, make a list of your startup elements and add deadline dates on your calendar for all of them. So everything we discussed in today's class, and I will be sending out the replay so you can write them all down, you can go over them, but make sure that you are adding a deadline date to your calendar for all of them. This is not a, oh, in the future, I need to do that situation. This is how we move forward. You got to do all of those things. So that's the day three homework. I'll be sending this out to you and I expect you to do it. <laughs> All right, so really quick, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're going to um, you know, raise your hand, whoever raises their hands first, we will have a quick little um, one or two person Q&A depending on how long we have, all right? So, 
let's see. So, you know, um, to raise your hand, you just go to the reactions and select raise hand. All right. So if anyone has wants a clarification on today's lesson or has a specific uh, question regarding any of the previous lessons and their homework and what they're doing in their business. And if not, then we'll jump off and we'll all go have lunch. <laughs> or this might be your lunch for some of you guys. So we'll all return to work. But that's that. Um, Neeks wants to know what email marketing platforms do you suggest? Okay, so I just suggested them, MailChimp or ConvertKit. All right, you guys. So with that, we're going to wrap up for today. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure to tune in for tomorrow's. And on Friday, we are going to have a podcasting breakout session. So look out for information on that. And with that, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.